Welcome everyone. When you apply to a consulting firm, you'll likely have to solve an aptitude and personality test before getting your invitation to the interviews. The formats of those assessments may vary slightly amongst different consulting firms. In today's video, we'll focus on Bainsova assessment. I'll explain the details of it, walk you through a sample test created by our team, and share our key tips and resources to ace in aptitude and personality test. Let's get started. Before we begin, if you're seeking practice tests that will help you ace SOVA, you might want to check out our online assessment package. It includes tests and guidelines on this assessment, as well as Bain and BCG Pi metrics, McKinsey Solve, and BCG Potential Test. I'll share the link below. All right, Bain SOVA assessment is divided into four pillars, verbal reasoning, numerical reasoning, logical reasoning, and personality test. There's one more test that, but according to my conversations with our trainees who took the test, Ben hasn't rolled this one out yet, which is situational judgment test. In verbal, numerical and logical reasoning tests, the assessment won't be time limited and there won't be any time displayed on the screen. However, your evaluation will be based on both the time taken to respond and the accuracy of your answers. Let's start with verbal reasoning. You'll be given a passage about a market research or business problem. You need to answer three questions per passage and determine whether each statement will be true false or cannot be determined. In total, expect to read five different passages and answer 15 questions. A quick note, it's easy to get mixed up between false and cannot say. Choose false only if you have contrary evidence in the passage and choose cannot say if you have absolutely no evidence proving or disproving the statement. Also three verbal questions from our Bainsova package on our website. Let's get started. This passage compares large scale aircraft manufacturer Worthman with smaller plane producer Autofly amidst evolving air travel trends. Feel free to pause this video now and read those paragraphs. Once you're done, unpause and we can solve the questions together. All right, first question. The airlines with only Autofly planes in their fleets have half the capacity of the airlines with only Worthman planes. The answer should be cannot say. It's unclear from the information provided. On a per plane basis, we know the autofly planes have a capacity of 800, whereas Worthman planes have 500. But also the total capacity depends on how many of each type of the airplane the airlines have. Next, the hub spoke model would cost passengers more time, but should be more efficient in terms of airline capacity utilization. As passengers from different destinations gather in the same airport to fly to a specific destination, the cumulative demand would be higher than the demand created by the individual airports. At scale, this would allow them for better optimization. It's also stated at the end of the second paragraph that this model allows them to maximize their profitability. The last question. The recent developments in the airline industry favor Worthman, which produces small and mid-sized airplanes that are more functional for the hubspoke model. The hubspoke model favors Worthman's competitor, Autofly, because Worthman offers extra large planes to serve long distances, while Autofly's planes are more convenient for short and mid-range flights. Before we move on, let's take a quick break. If you'd like to see more content on online assessments, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell. All right, let's get back to the video. Let's move on to the numerical reasoning. You're given a chart for every three questions. You need to run some calculations to answer each question. Charts are often easy to understand and much easier than the ones in case interviews. Having said that, make sure that you read the chart first and understand what each axis represents before reading the question. Given that the test is often taken at home, you can also use a calculator in this section. In total, expect to read five different charts and solve 15 questions in total. I'll walk you through three numerical questions from our course. Let's begin. We're looking at Premier League revenues by segment between the 17-18 season and 21-22 season. The revenue streams are broadcasting, commercial sponsorship, and match day. Great. On the y-axis, the figures are provided in million pounds. Now, let's read the first question. What is the growth rate of the fastest growing segment in the past five years? Let's calculate one by one. Broadcasting. In 21-22, the revenue was 3.1 billion pounds. In 17-18, it was 2.844 billion pounds. Dividing those two, we get 109%. And since we are asked to calculate the growth rate, let's subtract 100%, so we get 9%. 
Let's follow a similar approach for commercial sponsorship now. In 21-22, the revenue was 1.65 billion pounds. In 17-18, it was 1.305 billion pounds. Following similar steps, the growth rate should be 26%. Lastly, we have the match day revenues. In 21-22, it was 700 million pounds. And in 1718, it was 670 million pounds. So the growth rate is 4%. Great. Based on this, the fastest growing segment is commercial and sponsorship revenues. Let's move to the second question. We are asked to identify which segment was affected the most by COVID in the 1920 season. To answer this question, we need to compare the revenues with the previous year, the 1819 season. Let's look at the growth rate, exactly the way we did in the previous question. For broadcasting, let's divide 2.34 billion pounds by 3.049 billion pounds and subtract 100%. We get minus 23%, meaning the revenue is declined by 23%. Moving on for commercial, we need to divide 1.563 billion by 1.418 billion and subtract 100%. Okay. There is a 10% increase in the revenues. Lastly, to calculate the change in match day revenues, we divide 599 million by 683 million and subtract 100%. We get a decline of approximately 12%. Hence, broadcasting was the segment most affected by COVID in the 1920 season, experiencing a 23% decline in revenues. Let's move to the final question which asks us to estimate the total revenues of Premier League for the past five years. We'll need to sum up all the figures in the table, and I suggest we do this year by year. For the 17 and 18 season, the revenue is the sum of 2.844 billion, 1.305 billion, and 670 million, totaling 4.819 billion. If we perform the same calculations for the other years, we arrive at the following figures. For the 18-19 season, the revenue is 5.15 billion. For the 1920 season, it is 4.502 billion. For the 2021 season, it's 5.115 billion. And for the 21-22 season, it's 5.45 billion. So in total, the Premier League's revenue for the past five years should be around 25 billion pounds. That was the last question from the numerical reasoning part. As you can see, the calculations required are straightforward, and the challenge here is to interpret the chart quickly and correctly. Let's move on to the logical reasoning. By using deductive, inductive, diagrammatic, abstract or critical reasoning, you'll need to identify a pattern and choose one option from the six given. In this assessment, you'll solve 15 such questions. Let's review three sample questions available in our course. Starting with the first question, we need to identify which shape continues the sequence. Observing the pattern, it seems we add one line each time. So the answer should be fourth shape with an additional line. Let's review each option. Option A is irrelevant as the two sides are empty. Option B has an entire envelope, which is not the immediate next step. Option C seems to be the right choice to me as it is the only shape with one side covered by a line that continues the sequence. Now let's solve our second logical reasoning question. There are four shapes and we need to identify which option fills the empty space. Let's examine each shape. Each image contains three triangles. In the first image, the filled triangle is the inner one. In the second image, the middle triangle is filled. In the third image, another triangle is filled. Finally, in the fifth one is the inner triangle again. So the pattern moves from the inner to the outer one and then returns to the initial position. Therefore, the fourth shape should include a pattern where the middle triangle is filled. This would be option B. Let's go over one last question. First, we need to identify the pattern. Focusing on the circle, it seems to be moving clockwise. Hence, the fifth circle should be at the top left. Looking at the plus sign, it moves in the opposite direction, anti-clockwise. Hence, the fifth plus sign should be at the top right. The answer is C. All right, let's move on to the personality test. On each page, you will indicate to what extent for given statements reflect your behavior at work, ranging from least like me to most like me. Here's an example from our SOVA course. There are four statements and you can only select an option once. So you need to order the statements accordingly. You can expect around 40 sets of four statements in real life assessment. So it will certainly take some time to complete it. Pay attention to two things. 
I'm sure your answers are consistent throughout. For example, traits like teamwork will be assessed by many statements. Rephrase slightly differently throughout the assessment. Be consistent with your responses. Second, aim to portray your true self, but at the same time, try to avoid traits that are not desired in consulting. To illustrate this with an example, I've gathered a few statements from the personality test sample shared by Sova. You may want to select the following as least like me. It can sometimes take me a while to get over a setback. I can easily become bored by a lot of detail. I'm often uncomfortable speaking with people I don't know well. I sometimes find it boring having to learn new things. The last assessment type is the situational judgment test. None of our trainees has been asked this test by Bain yet, but it would be still useful to review it. You'll see a short description of scenarios that resemble situations you may encounter at work. Based on this, you'll select the most and least effective actions out of four options. Let's review an example Sova shared on their website. We need to establish roles and responsibilities for a team of four to draft a proposal within the next six weeks. While there is no right answer, I'd select the following as the most effective. Ask each colleague to submit a short biography of their expertise to determine who will be best placed to take on each role in the project. This demonstrates proactivity and would also allow us to make the most of each team member's strengths. So for the least effective action, I would select allocate roles and responsibilities across the team members relatively randomly and ask them to let you know if they have any concerns. Even though this might save us some time, we have six weeks ahead of us. So asking for the team members bios or meeting with them briefly shouldn't take more than a few hours. As a leader, you need to make decisions based on facts. You shouldn't just make decisions randomly as stated in the option. Great. We've gone through all the sections and the questions walked through. If you're looking for a comprehensive resource, you can check out our Bainsova assessment package, which is part of our online assessment course. In the same course, we also have BCG potential test, which will help you improve your numerical skills. Additionally, you can also check out our get to offer course, where there are 50 exhibits and 100 numerical questions to help you further with your preparation. If you need to brush up on your math skills, you can also access it for free on our website. Furthermore, you can visit Sova's Candidate Preparation Hub and take a practice test. If you'd like to access more questions and see what the personality test may look like, you can also register for the trial Sova offers. Okay, I hope this guideline was useful. If you haven't done so, please give this video a like so that others can benefit from it as well. I'll see you in the next video.